Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthiers Workbench. In this episode, I am going to explain my technique for level sanding, polish sanding, and then buffing out a water-based clear coat finish like I've done on this guitar. And this video actually complements a video I posted a couple of weeks ago where I talked about how to spray a water-based clear coat finish so that it lays down as smooth as possible. And just as a quick recap, um, the products that I use in my water-based finishes are all from Crystallac. I use their Craftnik pigments for color, and then I use their sanding sealer and their uh, Bright Tone instrument finish for uh, the final clear coat. So what I'll do is, in the description below, I'll post links uh, for all the different products that I'm using in this process. And at the end of the video, I'll share some tips that you can consider when planning your own uh, level sanding, polish sanding, and buffing workflow, because it may differ depending on the equipment and tools that you have. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump in and get started. The first step is to level sand the surface, and to do that, I'll use 3M's 216U free cut gold sandpaper in P800 grit, and I'll wrap that around a rubber eraser. And I find rubber erasers are firm enough to level sand, but not so soft as to cause the sandpaper to adhere to um, irregularities in the surface. Since I'm dry sanding, I'm going to have to periodically clean the surface of the sandpaper, and it's pretty easy to do. I just wipe it off with a clean paper towel. To check my progress, I'll stop sanding every so often and wipe off the dust with a clean cloth. Then I'll look at the surface at a low angle against a bright light. What I'm looking for are shiny spots, which are an indication of low areas that haven't been leveled yet. I find it's easier to sand in sections, so what I'll do is I'll divide the surface up into quadrants and sand one at a time until I'm satisfied I've removed all the low spots and have the surface completely level. You'll notice that the areas which have been sanded have a dull flat sheen to them and that's what you're looking for when level sanding. Once the entire surface is level it's going to look flat. And here if you look closely you'll notice a diagonal scratch which I need to get rid of so I'll work that area with a little extra effort. All of the other surfaces will be sanded using the same approach. However, I may use smaller uh, rubber erasers as my sanding block so I can get into tighter curves. And I'll continue periodically wiping off the sandpaper to make sure it doesn't clog up with sanding dust. To sand in some of the tighter spots, I'll have to hold the sandpaper with my fingers, but at 800 grit, it's not going to cause any issues. So I'll stop sanding every so often to wipe off the surface so that I can check it against the bright light to make sure that I'm getting the surface level. And of course, I'll sand the sides and the back of the guitar using the same technique that I demonstrated on the front. And after I finish sanding with the 800 grit, I'll check the entire surface with a bright light at a low angle to make sure that the surface is level and consistent. Now the question you probably have is, how do you know when you're done level sanding with 800 grit? And what you're going to look for is a consistent flat matte sheen. Because when you started out, the surface was probably fairly shiny. And as you begin to sand, that surface gradually converts to a flat matte sheen. And you want to check and make sure as you're looking at it uh, at a low angle under a bright light that there are no shiny spots left in the surface. Shiny spots are going to be the low areas and the flat matte sheen is going to be the high areas. So once you have removed all those shiny spots you have a level surface. However, you want to be really careful here because it's easy to over sand and then sand through especially at your edges and into the underlying color and even down as far as the raw wood itself. So to avoid that, 
what I typically recommend is that you try to level sand the surface until it's about 90 to 100% level. If you still see a few spots of shiny um, finish, don't worry about them. You're going to take care of those later on as you continue polish sanding. Once I'm satisfied that the 800 grit level sanding process is done, I'm ready to move on to polish sanding. And I'm going to do that using the Super Asilix K1200 grit sanding sheets, which are attached to a Super Asilix interface pad, which in turn is attached to a yellow Super Asilix sanding block. Now the process for sanding is pretty much the same as when I level sand with the 800 grit. I'm just going to use the weight of my hand to sand the surface. The goal with polish sanding is to remove the 800 grit scratch pattern and replace it with a finer uh, 1200 grit scratch pattern. I have to keep the sanding sheet clean so I'll wipe it off periodically with a clean paper towel. All the contours, uh, the sides, and the back of the guitar will be sanded using the same technique. And once I've finished sanding with the 1200 grit, I'll inspect the surface uh, carefully to make sure that I have a consistent 1200 grit scratch pattern. And it should look something like this. Once I've finished sanding the surface with the Super Asilix K1200 grit, and I'm satisfied that I've achieved a consistent, uniform uh, surface quality, I can then repeat that process using Super Asilix K1500 grit. And that's going to refine the surface to the point where I'll be ready to start my buffing process, which I'm going to explain next. Before I can start buffing out the finish, it's imperative that I inspect the surface carefully one last time to make sure that there are no sanding scratches which appear more pronounced in one area than in any other area. Unfortunately, this photo isn't going to do justice to the surface quality, but what I'm looking for is consistency. And as you can see in this photo, the surface looks pretty consistent. I designed and built my own buffing machine specifically for buffing out guitar finishes. And it's based on a one horsepower motor spinning at about 1725 RPM, which through uh, belts and pulleys spins the shaft at about 1000 RPM. And with a pair of 14 inch wheels on each end of the shaft, the surface speed is about 3500 RPM, which I find is about the right speed for buffing out a water-based clear coat finish. I have two soft cotton flannel wheels on each end of the shaft, and each end is dedicated to its own Minzerna solid polishing compound. To start with, I use Minzerna P204 medium cut polishing compound, and then to finish, I use Minzerna's P175 super finish. Now before I start to buff, I'll inspect the surface of each wheel to make sure that they're free of stray fibers or clumps of compound which could scratch the surface of my finish as I'm buffing. I start with the Menzerna P204 uh, medium cut compound and I'll charge the wheel. Now it's very important that you don't cross contaminate your wheels with different compounds because it's a real pain to clean them out if you do. What the buffing process actually does is it generates friction between the surface of the finish and the buffing wheel, and that in turn generates heat. So what happens is, is you're wearing off the very surface of your finish on a microscopic level, and the result is a high gloss polish. However, since you're generating heat, it's important to keep the surface of the guitar constantly moving. If you um, linger too long in one spot, there's a chance that you could overheat and burn through your finish. Now I typically find that it's hard to burn through a water-based finish. However, the heat you generate could cause the finish to shrink as it cools down 
if you generate too much heat. So I try to minimize the amount of heat generated by keeping that guitar body constantly moving as I buff it. As I buff, I'll periodically stop and check the condition of the surface to make sure that I have a uniform and consistent shine developing. And then I'll recharge the wheel periodically with uh, more of the Mizerna P204 compact. Now after buffing the surface with the uh, medium cut compound, I'm ready to buff with the fine cut. However, before I can do that, I need to remove the residue left over from the medium cut. And since buffing generates heat, and heat means a softer surface, I really should let this guitar cool for about 30 minutes before I wipe off that residue and proceed with the um, final finish buffing. The process for finish buffing is pretty much exactly the same as when I buff with the medium cut compound. I'll charge the wheels with the super finish P175 compound and begin buffing as I did before. And any areas where there might be some difficulty getting that uh, last little bit of high gloss shine, I can apply a little bit more pressure as I buff, but I just want to make sure I keep the body moving so as not to linger too long and risk burning through the finish. To get into some of the hard to reach areas, what I've done is I've removed one of the wheels so that I have a narrower buffing wheel surface to get into uh, those tight cutouts. Okay, well, there you have it. Uh, it's a pretty simple process for achieving a high gloss finish when you're using water-based clear coat products. It simply consists of level sanding, polish sanding, and then buffing with two different uh, grades of compound. And it's really quick and it's really simple to do. Now I realize that not everybody is going to be able to follow exactly the same process basically because of the type of equipment you have. So let me give you some pointers that you can consider when planning your own workflow. So first of all, with level sanding. Ideally, the smoother you can lay down your clear coat finishes, the finer the grit you can start with when it comes to level sanding. And as I explained in my previous video about spraying smooth finishes, and I'll, I'll put a link up here uh, if you want to go back and watch that, um, what I tend to do is lay it down smooth enough so that I can start level sanding with an 800 grit, a P800 grit. I always use the P designated uh, grading system because it's a, uh, it's a more accurate and finer grading system. And you know you're using a P grade sandpaper if the grit designation is preceded by the letter P. So that's usually what I stick with. Anyway, you want to get it as smooth as possible so that you can start with the finest grit. And like I said, I start with about a P800, although I could probably jump to a P1000 if I wanted to. Now, as far as polish sanding is concerned, that is totally dependent upon how you're going to buff the final finish. And since I'm using a buffing machine, I can really simplify the polish sanding process and keep it just to two grits, 1200 and 1500 grit. If you're going to be using a different method to polish, uh, for example, one that uses liquid polishing compounds and maybe a car polisher or one of those foam pads chucked into a hand drill, or even if you're going to be hand buffing using a clean cloth, you're probably going to want to polish sand to a finer grit designation. And I use the Super Asilix, um sanding sheets, and I believe those only go to 1500 grit. However, they also sell a product called Bufflex, and I think that one goes up as far as 3000 grit. So at that level, you should have no trouble um, bringing up a high gloss shine, even if you're going to be buffing by hand. Now, unfortunately, um, Super Asilix and Super Bufflex are kind of expensive, and some folks may not be too uh, thrilled with spending that kind of money for their uh, polished sanding needs. But you can also use 
uh, Merca Aberlon pads, and those go up to about 4,000 grit, and they work pretty well, wet or dry. However, they produce a slightly more noticeable scratch pattern, even in their finest um, grit designation. I find that the Super Asilix and the, and the Bufflex produce a, a very subtle scratch pattern, which is much easier to buff out. But you can certainly achieve good results if you go with Merca Aberlon. You can also use um, Micro Mesh, which goes all the way up to 12,000 grit. And that's typically used in a wet sanding process. However, the end result, the bottom line is, and I think this is what the most important takeaway and the most important key is, when it comes to level sanding and polish sanding, you want to simplify the process and reduce the number of grits you use because the more grits you sand with, the more likely you are to sand through your finish and into the color and the underlying wood. You're also more likely to have sanding scratches that can be a, a real challenge to remove. But if you keep your process simple and reduce the number of grits as much as you possibly can, I'm using three, uh, you'll have uh, a much greater chance at achieving a really gorgeous high gloss finish in a much uh, shorter period of time. So that's really all I've got for this episode. I hope that you uh, learned something from it. If you did, click the thumbs up button, uh, leave comments if you've got questions. And if you don't already subscribe, you know, hit that subscribe button and you'll notice a little bell icon that will pop up when you do that. Click that and you'll get notifications every time I post uh, a new video on my channel, which is usually about once a week. So uh, that's it for now. Take care, and I'll see you soon.